AI tools are all the rage right now. They are flooding the market and for good reason. In recent history, we've been able to offload mundane and repetitive tasks to computers so they can just process them in the background, saving us tons of time. But AI can now do some really interesting, creative and unique things. As designers and creative people, we should be leveraging these tools and using them in our workflows, not being fearful of them. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you nine AI tools that you can start using right now as a creative. I'm gonna tell you where to get them, how to use them, and some recommendations on how you might leverage them into your workflow to give you superpowers. All right, let's dive into the first category, which is words. And we can't talk about generating words with artificial intelligence without talking about the gigantic elephant in the room, and that's ChatGPT. If you've been living under a rock for the past six months, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence-based chatbot that allows you to interact with the brain that is the artificial intelligence via a series of text prompts. So that means we can ask ChatGPT to write us a blog post about shoes, and it's gonna spit out a blog post about shoes. We can ask it to then lengthen that blog post or shorten it to get more specific to write about a certain type of shoes. We can even ask it to take on certain characteristics like ask it to be smarter or funnier or wittier and it will tweak and change the writing based on the prompts that you insert. So ChatGPT can do a lot of things but how should you be using ChatGPT to really leverage it and get tons of value out of it right now? Well I think obviously you can have ChatGPT do all of that writing stuff that maybe you're not so great at. Ask it for copy for your website ask it for SEO recommendations, ask it to fill in lorem ipsum because lorem ipsum sucks and you'd rather actually have something written and your clients will be wowed by it. But also maybe take the next steps and ask it to do something that's a little bit more complex, which is respond back to you from a very specific point of view. I've been asking ChatGPT to respond to me as if it were the users in which I'm designing for. I'm treating it like my user personas. I'm asking it tons of questions about how it uses applications and what types of things it's looking for, and I'm getting back very interesting results. You could also ask ChatGPT to be your own personal design or business coach. Tell it to fill the role of an experienced web design agency owner that's making high six figures and working with awesome clients, and they've been doing that for the last 15 years, then ask it questions about how you might write your proposals, your contracts, how you might speak to your clients, and you'll get really cool results. This tool is learning as you interact with it. So continue to tweak and change your prompts and you'll get better and better results. And you'll likewise be training it to respond better in the future. All right, next up on the list when it comes to words is Jasper AI. Jasper does a lot of different stuff, but it's a really phenomenal tool if you need help writing creative words. It's a little bit different than ChatGPT, which feels very much like a blank canvas. Jasper AI, on the other hand, feels a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more intuitive. They have an entire template section that you can filter down on the type of content you're looking for to create. You can head over to the website tab, you can get headlines and body copy, you can get value propositions. Everything's very organized and easy to understand there. But then you can jump right over to the product category, you can get an Amazon product description, an eBay listing. There's just all sorts of things you can do there and it's very easy to kind of jump off and have a starting point inside of Jasper. How can you start leveraging Jasper into your everyday creative work? I would highly recommend using all those templates, using the recipes, mixing and matching and saving some of your own as you go. You'll start building a little bit of a library as well as your own personal knowledge base on what you can possibly do with Jasper. All right, last one on the list when it comes to words, and this is gonna be Notion AI. That's right, Notion, which is my favorite note-taking organization, kind of like life productivity application, has recently released their AI feature. It's super integrated right into your normal Notion workflow. So while I'm typing, while I'm working, while I'm kind of managing everything, all I have to do is type a slash, open up that kind of drop-down quick action box, and it gives me the option to utilize AI. The AI that Notion is using Using is pretty good. I don't know exactly where they're drawing it from, but it doesn't feel like it's quite as effective or full-fledged as something like ChatGPT. But the fact that it is tied and integrated right into the tool you're already using, so you don't have to open up a browser tab. You don't have to open up something else and figure out, okay, I'm gonna grab this and copy and paste it. It's right here. Notion's AI will allow you to write things from scratch, tweak them, change them, make them longer, write you outlines, lists, all the general stuff that any of the other tools can do, but again, it's just integrated right into the tool. 
All right, let's talk about the next category of AI tools, which is all about imagery. Dolly is an AI system that creates realistic art and imagery in a similar way as ChatGPT by interacting with it via text-based prompts. Basically, you're gonna do a similar thing here, which is input a bunch of text prompts inside of Dolly, and it's gonna generate unique and mind-blowing artwork. And the more complex and nuanced and niche your text prompts are, the better and better the artwork or imagery gets. Not only can you generate artwork from scratch, but you can also upload imagery and photos into Dolly and it will utilize that imagery and pull it into whatever you're trying to create. So how can you use Dolly right now in your creative work? I always think it's fun to over deliver, to do something a little bit extra to get that wow out of my clients and my stakeholders. So sure, if my client wants some concepts, maybe some mood boards, something to look at, some directions, of course I could deliver them some layouts with some colors, yada, yada, yada. Or I could use something like Dolly to generate some mind-blowing imagery that I would insert. I can use maybe the images of their already established products, mix and mingle them, and show them something that's unique, original, mind-blowing. I can then add a little chat GPT and replace the Lorem Ipsum, and I have a full-blown marketing page that's unique and interesting that's like nothing else. Next up in the category of imagery is Midjourney. Midjourney is another tool that's an AI-based system that allows you through a series of prompts to create unique illustrations and artwork. Now this one's a little bit tricky because the interface that you actually interface with is a Discord channel. You're gonna sign up for a free Midjourney account. It's gonna kick you over to the Discord channel. You're gonna choose one of the channels on the left-hand side, type slash imagine, and then there go your prompts. And then you have to wait for it to generate your artwork. But the problem is that there's thousands of other people generating artwork at the same time. So the feed is just going super fast and it feels a little weird. But once it generates your artwork, it's gonna generate a series of four selections and then you can actually drill down on any one of those four selections and have it continue generating in that path. So it is kind of fun. It's a little bit like the Marvel Cinematic Universe multiverse where there's branches of branches of branches and you can always go back to a previous branch and start a new branch. So have fun with that. How can you start using Midjourney right now in your creative work? Well, the way that I like to use Midjourney is not so much for that end result, final imagery and artwork way, but instead the beginning of the concepting process. So I'll head into Midjourney and feed it a bunch of prompts to design me some layouts for a website that have these specific requirements and see what it feeds me back. And then I'll start choosing and riffing off of some of those selections until I get some results that I actually kind of like. Then I'll pull them out of mid journey and I'll riff on them in my design tool like Figma or XD. There you go. We've gotten a huge fast forward in the concepting process that allowed me to deliver initial concepts to the client. Our another image based AI tool is one you've actually already heard of and this is Jasper again. What I like about Jasper is that it does words and images all in the same place. It's not separate projects, separate sites, but one site. It is a little bit expensive, but you can sign up for this one account of Jasper and have access to all of it right there. And again, it's super user friendly. Now let's move to the third category of AI tools, which is design specific tools. First on the list is a magical little tool called Magician. Magician is a plugin that works inside of Figma. It's already integrated inside of Figma and it uses AI to generate words, icons, and imagery, which is kind of mind blowing. Magician is a couple bucks a month. In my opinion, pretty worth it. Not a sponsored video, just really, really enjoy it. But all you have to do is download, install the plugin, get it running, and then you can feed it text-based prompts directly in the plugin and it will generate things for you on the fly. We're talking about generating iconography for you on the fly, imagery for you on the fly, or selecting words inside of your layout and saying, fix these words, make these words better. So it's all the things we've already talked about, but simplified into a nice, clean, simple little Figma plugin. How can you start using Magician inside of your workflow right now? If you're a Figma user, download it and start using it. That's it. It does all the things we've already talked about from the other AI tools. It just happens to do it right inside of Figma. So that's, that, that's how you'd use it. All right, are you ready for a mind-blowing AI-driven design tool? Okay, this one has to do with color and it's called Chroma. Chroma is a free tool to use. You log onto the website. It's gonna ask you to select a series of colors that you enjoy. It's going to build a model of the types of colors and pairings of colors that you prefer to use. And it's gonna spit out a slew of color palettes and color matches that you can start using in the beginnings of your design work. 
How can you start using Chroma inside of your workflow? Well, if I'm starting a project, it's fun to use Chroma to kickstart that exploration and ideation process. I start concepting and building ideas of what types of colors and matches of colors might work well. You can scroll endlessly on other color palette sites, hopefully add in some hashtags or keywords that might get you close, or you can try something like Chroma and let the artificial intelligence algorithm computer brains do the work for you. Okay, last up in the design category, is probably the worst and best AI tool of them all at the same time. Let me explain. Durable is an AI tool that will help you build a website in 30 seconds. That is its claim. Build you a website for your company in 30 seconds or less. This is like a pizza delivery kind of thing where if it doesn't build my website, do I get it for free? Is that what we're doing? If you head over to Durable's website, it will allow you to click the button and start generating your website. It's gonna ask your location, what your industry is, what's the name of it. And then from that, it's going to, using artificial intelligence, it's gonna create you a landing page for your website. This means it's gonna generate a full website with a hero area and headline, and maybe some sort of sub headline, an about us section, maybe some value propositions for for your company and some other structural pieces all the way down the page until you get to the footer. Now here's why it's one of the worst AI tools, because the website that it designs is pretty atrocious. It's not great. You know, there's some structure there that's okay, but overall, like no one's launching a website that looks like this. That's, it's real rough. Here's why it might be the best AI tool out of all of them though. The websites that Durable is creating right now are about 15 years in the past. If AI continues to advance, which it will, and durable stays the course and advances how they use that AI and leverage it in their process, we might see the website stop looking like they're from the 90s and then move to the early 2000s. And then from the early 2000s to 2020, and we all of a sudden might be making AI websites that are putting web designers out of a job because they're managing the copy, the imagery, the layout, the responsiveness all at once. So that's why it might be the best and the worst because it might put us out of a job. Don't be scared. It'll be fine. My advice is to not be afraid of AI, but instead jump in with both feet excited, learn, grow in these tools, and start leveraging them in your creative work. If you like the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design, development, and maybe AI tools as well. So hit that bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description for links to all of the tools that I mentioned in this video. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and joining me in the future by using these AI tools. See you in the next one.